Ich ja. Okay. Good evening. Thank you for coming to our site event for the tomorrow conference that will start tomorrow at nine. Uh, today, in the site events, we have the presentation of different projects. The first one is a group operativo. This is a type of project under the Common Agricultural Policy where uh, companies and stakeholders come together. Uh, the presentation Marta showed us before, it will be in Spanish, but they will try to talk in English just to understand everybody the presentation. If you have any doubt or any questions, just ask directly and all of us will try to help you. The other two presentations are related to two products we have in our, in our team, and it will be in English. One is uh, Forest Explorer. This is our explorer of the forest sector, of the forest system, the system in Spain, you will see. And the other is our simulator for growth and deal model. So I hope you enjoy this, this session. That's a warm up of tomorrow meeting in the Diputación. Thank you very much for coming. Hi, hello, everybody. Uh, sorry, first of all, uh, I would like to apologize because we have the presentation in Spanish. We thought that the, the public will be Spanish, so but uh, we promise you that if you want, we can prepare to translate everything and give it uh, to Felipe, and then we can share with you in English in a few weeks, in a few days. Okay, I will share the presentation. And also another apologize is uh, about our level speaking in English. So we will try our best, but we are not so common to speak in English in our community. So, uh, okay. In the case of all of you that are connected to Teams, the presentation will be in, in English. And the, uh, so, but we would like to repeat this session in Spanish in a few days also. So at the end, we will have the same presentation full in English and full in Spanish. So if you are not comfortable to, to listen today the presentation in English, uh, don't worry. <laughs> you can uh, wait a few days and then we will have everything in Spanish. Pantalla. Okay. First of all, I am Marta Salvador, PFC Spain. Uh, um, we are a, a group of uh, members that are related in a project that is the name of the project is Go Bosques. It's a, a group operativo Bosques. 3.0, and today is the first time that we present the, this project to the general public. So, first of all, thinking that uh, you should know who or, and why we want to we we develop this project, we started to uh, create this project. We would like to do a, a, a brief presentation about what is PFC and what is PFC certification. So, uh, PFC is a international global, uh, is a global organization, a non-profit global organization. The purpose of this uh, entity is to promote the, uh, the sustainable forest management and also to, pre to create a, and to give the opportunity to grow the use of these materials coming from the forest. So the, the key issue is to create a circular economy with this kind of materials. So how are we doing this? Is through the promoting the forest, the forest uh, management and also the, uh, through a uh, forest certification. So the certification is a tool, it's, it's not the target. The target is to uh, develop 
a better uh, understanding of what is the forest management in different regions. And as an international organization, uh, we have two different tools. The first, the more important one, sorry, I have to be here. <laughs> I remember now. Uh, the, the first one is the forest certification area. So we are uh, speaking about what is a sustainable forest. And the other part is the chain of custody certification. In this context, the certification of the forest management is related with the country or to an area, but the, the chain of custody certification is, is the same uh, standard for the whole, uh, for all the countries that are part of this scheme. So the important part for us because our purpose is to increase the, the, and improve the forest management, is the first part, the, the certification of the forest management. But we need this other process. I understood that this. But we need a way to connect the consumer with the forest. And the way to do it is the channel custody. So the, the standard of first management depends on the country, but the standard for the channel custody is only one for every country. Because remember that we want to connect, we want to improve a circular economy. And this is a way to show to the public consumer that this kind of products came for a sustainable forest. So we have a lot of products nowadays in the market that you can find with the logo on it. In the case of Coca-Cola, is the is the holder, the, the packaging to hold the, the, the bean, the cans. And all of these products, in this case, are all of them uh, packaging, paper packaging or book packaging. But we have also, in this case, uh, books, uh, magazines, different material for the to to write and also it's, it's a key it's a key moment for the furniture so we also have a lot of companies at national level but but also international one that produce this kind of material this kind of uh, products with certified material and the last part of this growing interest in the forest management is is the case of the Construction, construction sector that uh, because we are the, the, the construction sector will need to decrease the footprint so they are looking now to the good as a solution for this market in this case it's a it's a building promoted by the a local government here in Spain Navarra government and they are going to, to produce this the, the whole building is with wood and all of them, and the important part that you can see is sustainable. This is the key issue in this case. They want to produce this kind of building because came, this material came from Navarra and also came from a sustainable forest. Uh, trying to give you a, an overview of what is PFC at international level, you can see here the, the green, the, the dark green are countries that are members of this uh, global alliance and where you can find certified forests. In the case of uh, light green are countries that are preparing the, the scheme to be part of PFC alliance, but, uh, but also in the case of Russia and Belarus, nowadays they can be a member because, uh, because the Ukrainian war, so now they don't have this uh, opportunity to uh, offer PFC materials on the market. So here you can see in the first uh, in the first line the total amount of uh, certified area, the percentage at global level, and also the number of uh, chain of custody certificates. In for instance, in uh, these are the the certificates, but in one certificate uh, can be uh, more than 20, 30, 40 small uh, companies. So this is the, the total amount of certificates. 
not the total amount of companies that are involved in the certification. In the case of Spain, uh, neither we have almost this total amount of uh, certified area. Uh, but the more the most important part for us is uh, who are behind this 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 area. And in this case, there are more than sixty thousand people that are the forest owner of this area. And if you don't know how is the forest area in Spain, this can give you a clue of how is the forest sector in Spain. You can see here more than uh, 264,000 hectares <laughs> with more or less 1,000 and a half, uh, 500 uh, forest owner. But in this case, you can see that in Galicia, you need what? Yeah, pero es como está aquí. Está muy bien loca. But you can see here that in Galicia, there are tiny, small piece of land. So that is why they have so huge amount of people for this uh, amount of hectare. What's happening in the central Spain? In the central Spain? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Quite useful this map to, to see that. Um, Madrid, for instance, only two hectares. And we have a very nice forest in the mountains very close from Madrid. Why? Because they don't have a, a forest plan, because uh, they don't have a public um, organization to, to improve and to involve. The, the, the public and also the, the, the private forest to be part of the certification. We hope that now in, in Madrid that the, the local government of Madrid uh, started to be a member of PFC Spain last December, that we hope that at the end of this year we will have another, uh, a different uh, uh, amount of hectare there. And in general, this part of Spain is the producer one, and this is the huge, uh, uh, the forest owner are mainly private. Uh, um, in, this, in both cases, the local government give the opportunity to the private forest. If you are involved in, in forest certification, then I give you an opportunity, a, a premium, a, um, an, an extra point in this kind of uh, uh, funds to develop. So there are a, a different ways to promote the first certification in these areas. But I hope that in the future, uh, Madrid will grow uh, in, a, in a clear way. And in this case, you can see more than 800,000 hectares. And it's why, because the, the uh, Castilla Leon government decided to create this regional certification that we are not going to see. This is another important part. In PFT, they give us, they give the, the opportunity to the forest owner uh, that can be public and can be uh, uh, private. In the case of Spain, we have 70% of private, private forest. So, with less than three hectares per forest owner. So, we have to um, give them the opportunity to be involved in the certification, but in a way that they don't have to spend a lot of money doing it. So, in, in the case of Spain, we developed two different kinds of group certification. The regional one, that is related with uh, political borders, and the regional, uh, and the group certification. So, in the case of the regional, in this case, in this kind of certificates, uh, are included private and, and public forests. So, in the case of Castilla Leon, they uh, certify their forests in this regional and then give the opportunity to the private to be involved uh, without any cost. So, there are different 
ways to promote the certification in different areas. So in total, we have now 38 certificates with two different certification uh, bodies, INOR and DA. And to try to explain why we are developing this project is I would like to show you that the, the evolution in the forest owners that, are, uh, were, uh, that is involved during this year, this is the evolution. More than uh, 4,000 people are involved this year, during this year. So this is the growing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the growing. That is why we need to have a good IT mechanism or tool to control and to know what is certified and when. So I told you, I already told you that the, uh, in, in Spain, the private forest is 70%, but in this case, in the case of the certification, it's on reverse. The private certification is uh, 38% and the public is 62. Why? Because they have already a, a forest uh, management plan, and normally the, the, the management units are bigger, so it's quite easy to increase with them the total amount of certified, certified area. So that is why in 2017, we started with Inca. Uh, we, we, at, at that moment, we control the certification at national level as PFC. We know with Forest area uh, were certified because the certification body sent us a, an Excel file. file. So it was like a nightmare because every day we receive a lot of emails with Excels that every day was different. So we decided to collaborate, to start uh, collaborating with uh, Inca and then started with this online platform to register the certified uh, R. So we started in that day, and now we are uh, five and a half uh, years after. So what kind of user have this platform? We have a PFC, that is the, the last one, but the first one is the certificate holder. These uh, 38 uh, entities that control the, certific the certificate, and also the certification bodies. So with that, what we are giving them, the opportunity to manage and control the certified area in, in, in real time, and they can change it and increase and modify this, this for instance, this forest owner uh, have uh, sold the, the, the forest unit, so you have to change the name of the forest owner. So they can do it this in, in with quite easy way, but we need to improve it. So this information that nowadays is in this platform is connected with this searcher that we have in our, uh, in our website. So we, you can find in this searcher the, the certificates and in this one, the forest. If you know the, the name of a forest or uh, you want to find which in this area, which forest are certified, you can find it through this one. But it's a very, rudimentary way, so we, we need to improve it. And that is why we promote and we uh, develop this project that, as Felipe told us, is a, is a community, a, a common agricultural policy, so it's the funds is from the European Union and also with the national uh, minister, and which are the members of this project. Now, First of all, we are okay. we are started the project this January, and we are going to finish the, the project in in March 2025. Which are the members? The, the main members are DSC, Agresta, Inca, a, a, a regional a certificate holders, and a certificate a, a group certificate holders from Andalusia. So, uh, In this case, it's from Galicia, a small piece of land with different, with a lot of uh, forest owner, different kind of uh, production, uh, uh, 
eucalyptus, pine, so this kind of area, different kind of producer, the uh, products, everything is different. And in the case of Pradifir, it's Mediterranean forest with a, a low use of for good, it's mainly for hunting or for produce pork. So there are different kind of uh, uh, areas and a different, a totally different ways to, to control and to manage these forest areas. And also, they are collaborating with us, ENCE, uh, another certificate, uh, certificate holder of the region of Aragon, the, the local government of uh, Asturias, and also the uh, Oviedo University. So with them, we have uh, this project that the general purpose of the project is to create a new tool uh, to control this forest area and to give them the opportunity to use new technology to, to, to uh, for instance, to remote sensing and uh, things like that, to control the area and what are, do, what are doing the, the forest owner in the area and if they were a fire, everything using this as in, in a, a remote way. And also to connect this uh, information with the general public. Because at the end, we want to the, that the companies that are buying different kind of materials, for instance, this table, they can uh, buy from a Spanish company uh, that, uh, and with the guarantee that this material, this product came from a sustainable forest. So for us, this, part, this last part is the way to um, not, because, the first and the second uh, specific objective are focused on, on the users of this platform, but the information that is that will be in this platform will be useful for other people. So will be useful for the industry and will be useful for the uh, the end consumer. So at the end, this is the general idea, and then I give you the the floor to to Alberto to give us an overview of this platform, how it's functioning nowadays, and the, the improvement that we are hoping to develop during this project. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Marta. Uh, please don't sit so far because your English level is really, really better than me than, than, than mine, so, <laughs> so I, I, I may ask you for so now my name is uh, Alberto González Ronda. Well, my name is Alberto González Ronda. I am the technical director of Incamedio, and I am going to try to explain to you what is this IT tool about. Uh, first of all, we are going to talk about this project contest. Um, Marta says that. Uh, we start in 200 to uh, 2017. Uh, five years later, we are here uh, to to talk about the the future of this IT. So this uh, project contest is that uh, the main objective when we start, Marta and all the PFC team uh, talk to us. Uh, call us to with one objective that we, we you have to to make a digital tool to these nightmares that we have during the night uh, avoid to, to, to be a, a nightmares and and to be uh, I don't know if you have also a nightmares now but another style. So the, the objective was to, to, to build a, a digital system that managed all the uh, digital data that the PF, PFC system and uh, uh, normal PFC system uh, needs to, to, to certify that, that the uh, forestry area that is certified is really certified. Oh, okay, so uh, this is a digital tool that we manage uh, data and also geographical data 
the, the stack that we have uh, used is open source. Uh, we use uh, Postgre with uh, uh, PostGIS and GeoServer, GeoServer, PHP, and Open Layers. Well, now we are migrating to LibLeft GIS. Uh, well, uh, if you have more IT questions, uh, you can. Uh, asked me, and um, but I, I want to, to start with a, a really really key uh, with this project that is a a, a, a teamwork that uh, for me that we we are twenty we have uh, well in Camelio is a digital team that works in the <laughs> sector uh, during last uh, twenty years and and we have uh, success and. Uh, with with that with projects, but also we we have no success with with other projects. This is a a project success, and the key is that Marta Arancha on all the people uh, that works in with the PHC won't uh, know what he what they want. You put the put you put the uh, resource not only not only financial resource. Uh, work resource with uh, meetings and with, and this is a, a really really important key that uh, to, to to work together with the client and because uh, a digital team in this kind of projects needs to know what to what to do and and it's a a a, 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 a client team. Uh, Sharing information and sharing opinions and sharing. Uh, uh, well, before you go, yeah. The, the, can I ask you? Yeah, of course. Yes. In, in, in the technical aspect of it, you, you work with, uh, in the beginning with this type of product, uh, the software's uh, an open layer. Yeah. But you have said that you are moving from open layer to Leaflet. Yeah. Both of them are uh, JavaScript libraries. Yeah, yeah. But Open layer is wider used and wider implemented than than leaflet. I don't know why you to shift from one. Well, to yes, that's uh, because leaflet yes has more mobile mobile uh, uh, mobile design or how to say that mobile uh, strategy, uh, and well, we want to that uh, this this part not no whole system but. Uh, uh, Part of the system to, to be it can be reached with a mobile device, so that's the main the main reason. And also, open layers well manage. We we love open layers, but I don't know. We, we let this small community driving now. Well, we can share information, but the, the main reason is that a mobile mobile strategy to that works better, in, in our opinion, with that, than open layers. So well, work team, success. We have three uh, user profiles, that certificate holder, certification bodies, and PFC. Uh, each user has his requirement, okay, recruitment. Uh, but well, we are going to see the, the data data life cycle uh, for each uh, user profile. Uh, when we we are a certificate holder, uh, when we enter into the uh, PFC platform, first of all, uh, they can see a, a data resume. Uh, and well, in, in order to, to be a, uh, to, to have a, um, a scenario, a scenario of this or overview, <laughs> but what they are focused is in the second, the second one, that is activity in this uh, activity ma management of activities, activities management. They have three activities in order to, to change this data, this, this three points. One is an, an Ordinary audit and extraordinary audit, and also, uh, well, we call it 20% uh, improved uh, area, more or less. Uh, no, Marta. Yes. 
increase. In the case of a Spanish scheme, they can increase the certified area in a 20% between a, a, a different audits. So this is the, the way to include this area in the platform is through this kind of acti activity. Then the, the system sends an email to the certification body, they check it. So in the, in the case that the certification body check and then validate this, in this area, this area will be part of the certified uh, area for the, this group. What they can do in these activities is that manage these areas in order to uh, <coughs> add areas, modify areas, or not delay, de delete, uh, <coughs> that, uh, cancel areas, more or less, add, modify, or, or cancel. And with this, uh, once that this activity is made by the, by the certificate holder, a notification goes to the Second user profile is certification bodies that, oh, I have an email with this uh, uh, activity uh, solicitation uh, proposal, yeah, yes, activity proposal, and they check that this certification body check that it's okay, and okay, I agree, and, and this is the second, the second data life cycle that uh, we are talking about. This is the uh, certification bodies, okay, certification and agree, and also the, the, the certification bodies wants to see this data statistics and this uh, data overview uh, with this, uh, when, when they enter into the, into the platform, they can see this, uh, that uh, we have uh, approved this uh, uh, area. Um, the third one is PFC user. Well, monitoring and back report, all these kind of things. And when there is something extraordinary that uh, well, Marta called us like an hour. And also, uh, well, PFC user is focused on statistics and K indicators and all these kind of things that we want to improve in. In this, in this project. So, well, the, the challenge was really big because they are every day we have data, every day, with, every night. <laughs> and so, so this is really, really a big challenge for us. And well, I'm going to be real speedy because uh, we, we are going to, to make a, a walk into the into the screens that the, the has the, the, the platform. This is the uh, overview data that uh, they want to, uh, the, the certificate holder can see the data, the contact, the so data, uh, date of the, valid, of the expiration date, uh, kind of, uh, of uh, uh, how to say, this uh, user data, uh, user profile. And, uh, and what they want to, to and what they the data that they they, they uh, can they can they can see this uh, this kind of uh, small data with uh, indicators that uh, each province what what are the the, the area that is managed for for my 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 certificate holder and those kind of things they can export the data and. But what what's the the focus is that uh, how is is, uh, is this activity management? It's a bit that uh, is in Spanish because I don't know. But, well, this is the uh, they can add uh, activity a new activity and they propose I want to add these uh, two new uh, areas or these two thousand areas. So that, so they they. If, if, if it's two areas, they can put uh, by typing, but also if it's 100 or 1,000, uh, they can use these uh, import formats with, uh, let's say, well, we use uh, Excel, 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 Excel files, and they can download a model, an Excel model, 
and they can uh, just uh, upload. And Sorry, I would yeah. like to add that at the beginning, the, the first nightmare for it, uh, it was to uh, to have the same information from the different uh, certificate holders and the, the different uh, certification bonds. So uh, we, at the end, we create this table in a way and also to give the opportunity to this uh, very high tech certificate uh, holders to use their tools, but to, to be also very useful for the more simple ones. So at the end, we are giving them the opportunity to upload an Excel file with all the information. If they want to give, uh, to introduce in the platform only one uh, plot, it's okay, but if they want to introduce 1,000, it's possible in a very quite easy way. That's, that's the point. So when the, well, they can import these Excel files, and, and well, what we are working now is to improve these these models, these uh, plantilla, these models, and, and and well, it's 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 this is the the, the, the main functionality of this uh, activity management manager. This activity manager also can you can you can upload and download this. Documents. It's like a document manager, uh, like the, well, if you have an audit, you, you need to, to, to import or to, to upload this, this, uh, this document. The third uh, screen is what are my space? Well, if I'm a certificate folder, I can see the uh, of that overview, I can manage these activities, and I can see my my surface. What I in, in this uh, this data system start to be really in, in, interesting when we start to uh, to convert this uh, alphanumerical data into geographical data. This is a layer, and how 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 we can. We, how we can make this possible? Because we have a uh, really diversity of uh, users. So uh, there are users that uh, once uh, that has this system with the GIS system, QGIS or RGIS, RGIS. But also we have uh, users that um, I, I I don't I don't have idea. So we start to to, to improve this uh, uh, integration tool that if you <coughs> If you add the cadastral reference, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the cadastral govern the form. There is yes, an API, exactly. there is an, an API that uh, communicates with the cadastral authority and give us this, this, uh, this, uh, this sorry. So it was a, well, a good, a good uh, way to to, uh, to, to start adding this, this geographical data. The second one is that the, 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 the certificate holder can add this save file. We know that save file is an old format, but I don't know, it's still living. So, uh, well, we, 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 uh, they, can, they can upload these this save files <laughs> like they, they, they can upload this. Uh, Excel files or these same files with the same information, with the difference of the geographic information. Then they can, uh, the, the, the next screen is about statistical and indicators. So, well, we can manage this kind of indicators. We are, we are working on improving. And also, we, if we have this uh, uh, geographical information, geographical system, we can uh enrichment enrich enrichment enrich uh, well we can we can make this uh, intersets and with this this uh, yeah. information and enrichment that we can we can know that uh, an, uh, an area has what's the uh, the percentage of the protected area or, uh, or, or, or the 
class of each is a forestal forestry species. <coughs> sorry. So sorry. Uh, now we have these two intersections with uh, Renatura, Natura, with uh, protection uh, of our own Europe, Europe, and with this uh, forestry, uh, ma uh, Spanish forestry map. So uh, well, we can we can we can do this this uh, this kind of. Uh, Indicators. Finally, we have also two uh, buscadores, two searchers, search, search, searches that we are going to improve in the way that the map is changing. And we have also finally this open the Bosques portal that wants to put this uh, data all together. Uh, the idea of to, to have this platform uh, is that the certificate holders know and control in an in a easy way what they, the areas that are certified that are the, 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 the one that has the responsible to control it. But also it's, it's a way that the certification body, because the certification body has to go there every year and to select the area to, to, they have to do a sample of the, uh, uh, the forest units that they are going to control and to visit there. So this is a good opportunity to know where are the areas and with the second part of the project, thank you Alberto, thank you very much, that nice, uh, the, the remote tracing, uh, how they are, not, are going to know a lot of information about this forest unit without going there. And it's another way to select where you have to go to control what is happening there. So, I'll okay. Good afternoon. I'm Luis Tomé from Agresta. We are a leader for the forest consultancy. And we are the partner and expert in remote sensing in this consortium. Um, okay. In 2017, uh, when Alberto and EFC were uh, preparing this platform, there was a call for um, ideas of remote sensing from the PS PSC International. And at the same time, there was like an improvement in the standard that uh, makes mandatory to monitor all the surface. Uh, when you have to, to when you are gonna do an audit in the certification process, that means that it's gonna be very expensive for the process uh, to do so. And at the end, uh, there is an opportunity to try to develop a remote sensing technique in order to do a monitoring of the certificate area, detect where there were some changes, and then just visit these areas. Okay. And uh, we prepared uh, we prepare a proposal with, together with ESP <coughs> and, and we we get the funds and we develop this system of chain detection. Okay. So uh, at the beginning we begin uh, to work with Landsat due to the uh, time series. It's a really long time series, 50 years of uh, data. And there are two dates that are very important in mm -hmm. Landsat. The, one, the first one is 1984, because they changed the sensor to the PM sensor. And you can compare the data from this moment till today. And the other very important moment in the history of Landsat is the 2008. Today, open the data. So nowadays, Landsat is open. Everybody can use this, this data. So these uh, are the reasons that uh, lead us to work with Lanza, okay, in the project. And of course, they have, it has some uh, limitations. Uh, for example, the resolution. Uh, here you can see a high imaginary resolution, and this is uh, last time resolution is a 30-meter uh, uh, pixel. Uh, 900 square meters, and we have to uh, lead with that. 
Um, uh, the other thing that is the case of the system is vegetation uh, indexes. As you know, uh, when the light comes, it uh, has some reflection, and here you have the bands of a satellite, red, green, and the characteristic of each uh, surface. This is the proof of uh, the how the proof the how the vegetation uh, reflects the light. Okay, in the different uh, wavelength, and of course here you have the green uh, area point. That uh, is the reason because you see green vegetation because it has a high reflection in the green. And um, we take advantage of these indices in order to try to look for changes. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, a lot of different indices, uh, and we uh, try several uh, indices in order to select which are the best in order to detect the changes. And the other technology that we take advantage we take advantage was a uh, um, temporal series <laughs> because um, if you have imagine this pixel and you have several images of a pixel, you can see how the vegetation uh, indexes are during the time, and you can you can look for these places where there is like a shortcut here. Uh, important download in the reflection, and this kind of points, breaking points, can mean that there is a change in the territory. Okay, so we select this kind of uh, data in order to look for changes because we have many problems, um, for example, to deal with clouds. And if you use uh, time series, doesn't matter if you have clouds. Some days because you can make a composite in order to avoid these clouds. Okay. Um, uh, our first goal was uh, did a pilot project in Galicia. As Marta told you, it's one of the most problematic areas in Spain due to they are very, very small pieces of land where the changes are producing. So if we the hypothesis was if we are able to uh, solve the problem in Galicia, we are going to be able to work in our mind, okay? Um, our goals were try to detect changes every six months, every six months, and uh, also the change between 2011 and 2018, okay? And at the end, we prepare a methodology. We prepare, we download all the images, we prepare all the vegetation indexes, of course, there are some methodological stuff that they are tremendously very precise with masking, clouds, masking, shadow. After that, uh, we, um, let's see how I try to like that. We look for the tendency of these time series and we look for breakpoints in order to detect the changes. We also uh, put in the system some uh, trends areas, some roads, a region of interest in the land that tell us, they tell us what kind of change are we looking for. And at the end, we, we use um, machine learning in order to uh, detect the changes, okay? Um, we try several algorithms in order to work with a time series, but at the end, we uh, choose BFAST algorithm because uh, uh, land grant is very nice if anybody is, is, is familiar with uh, this kind of algorithms, but you only can have one uh, mo uh, one MOSFET there, and our goal is being able to do more frequent changes, and our goal was uh, get the change detected every six months. So uh, at the end, we go with DFAS, it's a very nice uh, algorithm. There is a periods of monitoring, and after that, you do the algorithm is training and can simulate this information, and you are looking for the breakpoint from the modeling to the real uh, reflection that you get from the field. Okay, and um, we are able to uh, monitor the date of the change from the months, but also the intensity of the change. And we, we use this kind of information in order to do a classification of the change. It's not the same a fire than a clear cut than a thing, okay? Uh, 
um, at the end, uh, we have a cartography of uh, the changes in Galicia for these different, um, these different uh, semesters. And um, this is a little piece of how the, every year the changes are changing. The Galicia is very interesting due to uh, this is very high productive area and changes are very frequent due to the people uh, harvesting the forest every time. And so we have a several problems with um, fires there. So it's a very nice place to look for changes. And at the end, uh, we do a validation working with high resolution imagery, trying to see if what we are uh, identifying as changes, we are really changes in the, when we try, uh, when we see it, with the information of before of the date of the change and after the date of the change. Yeah, it's the detection, the image of before and the image of after. That was a little bit problematic because um, we are uh, trying to get information from the very last moment and we don't have information in high uh, resolution imagery of uh, the last period. So to do the validation of the last period, we uh, managed to work with a Sentinel 2 image that has a 10 meter resolution, four bands, and this is the way uh, that we use to validate the last changes period. So at the end, we learned that we are able to detect all the changes that are bigger than one hectare, but still it's not good enough for Galicia because there are many little changes. And we are pretty good detecting the changes between 0.2 and 1 hectare, 70% of accuracy. And when we are in changes smaller than uh, 0 0.2 uh, hectare, we are like that. We are not able to detect this kind of changes with this technology. And we also uh, monitor false positives, and we have 15% of false positives. I think it's good enough. So at the end of the project, we were very happy with the scientific result, but we have a problem. It's too expensive to, uh, in, to do it every three months in the, for the certificate holder. So at the end, we have the technology, but it's not priority because it's so expensive for the system. And we begin to see, okay, the idea is good, but it's, we have to look for a system to do it in a more efficient way, in a cheaper way. And this is the, the original idea of post 2.0 project in terms of remote sensing. So we, we are looking for possibilities to scale it to the national level and to do it in a more efficient way in terms of profit, in terms of money. And um, of course, uh, as soon as uh, we are applying below uh, 0.2 hectares, we try to improve the system with Sentinel-2, that is a higher resolution. And perhaps our hypothesis is that we are going to be able to improve our um, accuracy under this uh, so nowadays, when working in this project with these uh, objectives, um, there are two uh, results that uh, are important in, in our, um, our tasks in the project. Uh, we are trying to implement the technology in cloud computing. And on the other hand, we, our goal is to get this new uh, change cartography for all the territory. Um, as you can see here, is, uh, we have three pilot, pilot areas. You do, as Marta told you, the problems of forest sector are the kind of chance that you have to detect in every uh, place are different. So we, are, uh, we, have, we have three different situations in Spain, small changes in Asturias, similar to Galicia, pretty big changes in Seville, and we have here also Huesca that has and some areas with small changes and other with a little bit bigger. Um, the, the main goal is to scale it to the national level. That is what Marta wants for the system. And 
we think that we are going to be able to achieve this goal. And of course, as Alberto told you, and his presentation is very important to uh, work with the certificate holders and some of the partners of the project certificate holders, because we need to know what are the needs in order to develop the system, and we are doing so with the project. Um, we are working with two, two hypotheses. One hypothesis is working with Google Earth Engine, that probably you know a lot of it. It's very nice, but it's such a restriction. Um, it's very powerful, but if you want to scale it to be more powerful, more um, PPUs, more, you are not going to get it because the way it works is the way it works. It's powerful enough for working for a pro business man, but for sure we are not going to be able to do it for all the spend in once, okay? So probably we want to attach the system, Martha, don't worry. <laughs> province, for province, so we, have, we have to deal with many things uh, every time, not with the whole country in once. The other, uh, the other possibility is try to use uh, cloud computing such as Dias in Copernicus, that you have as much as you pay, more for what you have. So, and the problem, again, with this system, is okay, we can deal with all the country, but we don't, we can't pay the money that is. So probably we are going to go with uh, Google Earth Engine. And at the end, we are the same. We are now trying uh, new um, algorithms, some intelligent artificial, artificial intelligence algorithms, and other machine learning algorithms, in order to select this best one for us in the project, and we are now testing different possibilities in order to improve the system. Okay, here you have the, um, some of the uh, tests that we are running just now in order to compare how Landsat uh, series are able to detect the changes and how Sentinel-2 series are able to detect the changes. Pretty good the knowledge, the tools of uh, them are pretty good. Um, at the end, our next step is try to find the better threshold for every tensor. Uh, again, we are dealing with uh, which is the best dedication business in terms of the tech it changes in every place of Spain. Um, of course, in the north of Spain, clouds is a big, big, big issue, so we are trying to see if we can incorporate Sentinel-1 and other sensor to the system in order to be able to deal with clouds and, and at the end and try to guess which is the best uh, algorithm for us in, in this moment. Uh, probably this algorithm. And this is also my part. Marta, I don't want to say this is the place where you have to ask whatever you want and perhaps we can, I, I don't know if you have time for uh, a little debate about the project, but if there is, uh, you are welcome to participate. <laughs> You guys consider to downscale a little bit more the prediction, for instance, involving IDAR analysis? Okay, that's, that's a pretty and, uh, interesting question. The problem with LIDAR is that we have, in Spanish, so that, as you probably know, because you are here for a while, yes. uh, Spain has a very interesting program of capture of uh, LIDAR, it's the National Program of uh, Orthophotography, and we are now uh, in the process of do the third national coverage of LIDAR, that is very nice because you can uh, work with multi temporal LIDAR and try to look for changes, but still the uh, PFC needs uh, more uh, resolution, uh, temporal resolution in terms of looking for the updates of the system. Because they are, as Martha told us, every time going and um, Growing and monitoring the certificates uh, is So we can afford to be more precise in a small scale. We need to work with all the around. But we do it uh, for force inventory, for example. Inventory, <laughs> 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 
No. Nice to see you. <laughs> a question about the levels. Uh, I saw you use some open source uh, software. You also use Landsat, Sentinel, R, open source data. And it was financial by the European Union. Mm -hmm. And my question is, how would it go in the application open source? Yeah. So, with some of the other things that we are looking at the technical open source, even then, the Sentinel one and the Sentinel one algorithm that we are testing. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. The thing that is not open source nowadays is the scripting, but all the algorithms are open source, and I guess that we don't talk about that. but we in terms of um, not the information about this, but in terms of the data, the ground data that we are using to train the algorithms, I don't think that is a problem that to share it after the project. But uh, what uh, for sure I think that we are not gonna share is the uh, scripting. Send me open source. I don't know why. We don't think about it yet. It's a, it's a huge um, project for us. Uh, we are learning a lot because it's, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, I I don't know where where we are going with this. Okay. But in, in this kind of projects, they give you the opportunity to develop new products that can be sold. So uh, even in the case that they are paying to uh, the, the develop of this kind of tool, after the project you can sell it. So, um, so that it will not our case because we want to use this, um, this tool for our own purpose, that is to control and to know where is the certified area and to give this user the, the possibility to have uh, a clear information in, in, in a very quick way. Uh, but maybe this uh, internal development is, is to be, uh, we have to develop, to think about it. it, it for example, we cannot uh, share the, what is the certified area with the name of the, uh, of the forest owner. This is private information in our case. We, uh, unless the forest owner give us the, uh, the right to do it. So one of the main uh, goals of the project is that the EFC technician are able to update the system without our help in the future. So they are going to have the information. But uh, in this case, I don't know if they are going to be the, the final algorithm is going to be uh, O. But perhaps the system will happen. And in the, I have experience in several uh, operational groups, and we used to share everything that we find. Okay, so that we don't have the, the algorithm that you are developing yourself within your company for this, uh, you use uh, only R for it or another language is the kind of programming language? We mainly use R, but uh, right. as, as you are going to talk about in this conference the next days. I, I guess that the artificial uh, intelligence is going more and more with Python. Yeah. So uh, I, we are seeing that Python is going to be mandatory in some of the, uh, of the algorithms that we are going to program. But they can do it together. Python. Yeah, yeah, but they can combine There is no problem. Yeah. In our company, uh, there are there are people that program in R because it was our, our best in the past week and it's nice. And now they say people is moving to learn Python also because we see that it's necessary to have a lot of artificial intelligence. So if you don't have more questions now, but you ah, there are a lot of questions. Okay. Thanks so much, and it's my pleasure to be here for the second. My name is uh, Ming Hua. I have uh, one question for the third speaker, and uh, it's not quite interesting. Uh, my 
in which case we use the tool to get every to take like 70% of uh, maybe the distant ones. Yeah. So uh kind of details you like uh, a nature of the distant ones, or maybe three or five, or maybe uh and you change the whatever. Only make sense the occurrence of all the existence of the servants, or you know what is the actual. Uh, <laughs> so, the property is the one you can get over. Yeah, yeah, recovery tool takes like 70% of yeah. the servants in the point here. So, when you uh, see slides, like the person of the servants, I get to the tool that you are looking the nature of it. What is the new problem on the noise? Like, the noise is Yeah, yeah. We are able to look at it. Okay, clear cutting, you see. Fires are all we see, and the main problem is the thinning. Thinning, or we are having some mistakes and confusion between thinning and progress of health, for health. We do a and it's very easy, and they are more difficult to uh, detect and uh, more several changes. So this is the most of the problem and we have. But these kind of changes that are related to the um, extension of the chains uh, is also due to the for you uh, are doing a very small changes, a uh, lancer success. Uh, are not exactly the same. So, you know, a pixel has half a change and half a pixel that has been changed. And that produces some noise in the system and, and you have confusion. Okay. Okay. Yes. There is a mail over here and uh, I will write a line and perhaps Mara in the board, and if you have any doubt, please write us and we can try to answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, now we are going to, to make a break for five minutes just to, to go to the restroom or wherever you want. The restroom are on the both sides of the corridor, and in five minutes we will be here for the second part of the side edit. But I have a question for you. Maybe some of you come from Far away, when you land it in Madrid, Barajas, you see bold dry lands, and then you drive to Valencia or drive by train, and then you say, How is possible that forest area here because there are no forests? <laughs> so, I have a for you,